We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. And she's Sophie. And she's Brenda. Hi everyone. And he's Grogu saying, Brenda, you don't look a day over 40. (laughs) Inside joke here, people. She actually is only 39. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) In my mind. In my mind, I'm 39. And we are on the road with Mickey. This is episode 223. 223. For June 10th, 2024 And our feature topic this week Is our top five locations Where the magic lives I think we're going to have a lot of fun And it's going to bring back some good memories um, Of where we've encountered the magic at Disney You know? Um, Yeah So I'm looking forward to hearing what you all have to say But first... We have some cheddar from the big cheese And it's my turn to start us off And I want to say Happy birthday Donald Duck Yay Yay! Happy Happy birthday birthday, Donald Donald. Yesterday June 9th Was the 90th birthday Of the one The only Donald Duck As we all know I mean (laughs) It's obvious when you watch Mickey's PhilharMagic Donald Duck is absolutely the calmest of any of the Disney characters Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly Bar none, bar none It's one reason why he was such a good asset to the army Exactly Well, (laughs) we might be stretching it a little bit there But happy birthday, Donald 90th birthday, June 9th, 1934 And speaking of birthdays, Uh last week, the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh at the Magic Kingdom turned 25 years old. That's the one at the Magic Kingdom. The one at Disneyland had been there for quite a bit longer. Happy birthday, Pooh Bear. I just think it's a great day for everyone to shout hooray. 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 (laughs) Yay. Well, not speaking of birthdays, but speaking of Christmas. Yes. Yes. Christmas is like Disney's Jollywood Nights is coming back to Disney's <gasps> Hollywood Studios this year. You Ooh, went to that, Disney. right, Brenda? I did go to that, and that's the first time I've ever met Mary Poppins and Penguin together ever in my life. So would you go it was again? The best you think? thing ever. Oh heck yes, I go. I love after hours events. Okay. I'm like crazy for that kind of stuff like mickey's very merry i always go to candlelight processional always go to jollywood nights that's just another one i'm adding to my list i love those kind of after hours things it's less crowded it's special things that don't happen any other time and i mean i'd forgo days on my park ticket to ha- to do the nighttime special events you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah so well yes i'm thrilled about that well good good So that is our cheddar from the big cheese All right So as always you got to remember We have our links in the show notes If you want to connect to us With us on our Facebook page Or in our Facebook group We got our YouTube channel linked And we have our Instagram linked And you can even email us Info at ontheroadwithmickey.com So just remember all that I don't say it very often I'm trying to be more up front and remind people And that. you're doing a fantabulous job All right Well that's good to know If Brenda says I'm doing good Then I am happy with that You're doing very good Okay good Well Our feature topic Our top five locations Where the magic lives And what we were What I was thinking Because I think most of the ideas Come out of this scary brain so um so anyway what i was thinking is that this would kind of be a hybrid episode where 
I would say, or or we all would say, a location where we find the magic of Disney. And Sophie was very smart in pointing out to me the other day that she was asking, are we talking about emotional magic or special effects magic? Like that really special, cool scene in the fireworks, that special effects magic. And... I was, and we all were thinking, emotional magic, where something drew on your heartstrings, you know? Yes. And yeah. so, so I had never even considered it in that in that vein. So, good good terminology, Sophie. Yes. Of course. So it's my turn to go first, and oh. I have a very special place where the magic could be found, um, and that is. I'm going to do this one right off the bat in front of Cinderella castle, which seems pretty much a given, but when you find out that on June 11th, 2012, that is the day that my niece, Stephanie was proposed to by her husband after midnight in front oh of Cinderella Castle. I didn't and know that. It was after midnight. It was yeah. after midnight, and it was really darn cool. That's it was perfect. very magical, and that just elevated it right on up to the right up the list. You know, I don't have that this in fantastic. a special order, but um, but I have I have a very great opener, and that was it. And I have a mm-hmm. I have a closer that is in my mind even better. Ooh, so. my goodness gracious! <laughs> better so. than Shane and Steph getting engaged. Wow! Yes. Better than that. And, Building it and up. That, I mean that you can't get better than that. But you know. So anyway, That's and, fantastic. and what's really cool is when I was doing these these notes and I and I looked up the date. It's tomorrow. <laughs> Yes. Tomorrow, June 11th. It's tomorrow, yeah, is, is, may it happen. It's tomorrow, 12 years ago. That is fantastic. That is just like, poof, poof. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that is a great one. I can't wait till you get to the to your number five. <laughs> right. it beats so that one. is that is, great. That is <laughs> my first one. So that's what we're going with, people. And I hope you all enjoy it. And on the flip side of that, we want to know where the magic lives for you guys. You know, I'm going to post it in the group and I want to hear some feedback on where that Disney magic lives for you and your family. Yay. All right. That's awesome. Thank you, Mike. Uh Uh-huh. Sophie, you're next. All right. Well. Considering what daddy started off with, I feel like my list is going to be a little less, um, how do we put this, a little less exciting. Because I was not there when Shane and Steph got engaged. I was very young at that point. And so they were like, hey, Sophie, why don't you go back with your friends to the hotel room? Uh, We have something that we're going to do while you're there and I was like okay because I had absolutely no idea what was happening yeah but anyway um for my list I don't really have an order in which these are going in because I was just thinking of what popped into my head and the first place on my list has to be that gate, the entrance with Mickey on one side, Minnie on the other. And it's always like whenever we're driving through it, my dad's like, Sophie, get your phone ready. You got to get a picture of it, but we can't stop because they have a sign there saying do not stop because everyone wants to get a picture of the gate. And there's a reason for it because once you pass through that gate, it's like passing through a magical bubble barrier And you are literally in Disney. There is nothing outside of Disney once you pass through that gate. And it is a magical feeling. I absolutely love it when I get to pass through that gate. It's like, 
It's like it's I'm like oh my home. god, I'm home. It's yeah. like you're exactly. home. Exactly. You're home. You have, you know, I I said it before and I wrote about it years ago. You have left Florida, and you have entered this world of Disney. Mm-hmm. It is. And it no is, matter how many times you've driven through mm-hmm. it, you have to get that same photo. There's a billion of that photo on our phones. Yeah. 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 And. 95 billion of them on my phone are all blurry because <laughs> I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying, trying to get the picture. <laughs> it just don't work, people. It don't work. <laughs> That's a great choice. That is so right, too. It's you immediately have that feeling that it's almost like letting out a big breath. It's yeah. just like it calms you immediately yeah like i'm home i i can yep it's just it's a feeling right i mean yeah you're hooked on a feeling aren't you brenda yeah <laughs> guardians of the galaxy put that in there Wait, <laughs> they got good taste <laughs> that was not even on topic but that was a great choice sophie <laughs> thank you great great number one there sophie brenda your turn <laughs> Well, my number one won't be any surprise if we're going to be talking about emotional Disney feelings because mm-hmm. I have no control over my emotions, apparently, even though I thought I did. And when I sat next to Walt the Dreamer statue, I had no composure. I tried so hard to just get my poop together, but I could not. <laughs> I was a basket case because it was so long coming. You know what, Brenda? (laughs) I saw just yesterday. I just happened. I've been so I had I have two computers. One is getting older and I was making sure that all of my pictures were moved off of there and put on my new computer and I had done an import. And so I was going through to make sure everything was was looking right because that's what I do. And. I came across your picture of Walt the Dreamer, and I didn't realize that it was done with the live thing for for an iPhone photo. And oh my! And I clicked on it, and Brenda, you are so adorable because you because you can see it, Sophie. I'll have to show it to you. You have to show it to me oh, because I'm like God. the only one that hasn't seen it. You are adorable, Brenda. And that emotion, you know what, people, if you've been watching this long enough, you know that Brenda's heart is on her sleeve. She That's wears it on her sleeve. What my and daddy used to tell me. Uh, very unashamedly. So do not. I tried so hard, though, because I wanted it to be a happy picture, but I could not keep my, I couldn't keep a smile up. My face was. <laughs> it is a happy picture. It's a beautiful picture, Brenda. And it's don't a happy you picture ever doubt because it. of the emotions that you were brave enough to show in it. Uh huh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's God. A, Isn't that adorable. such a feeling, though, when you sit there next to that statue? Yeah. And when I yeah. sat there, when we sat there, I got a little choked up too, Brenda. Not as bad as you, but I, but I felt it. I knew yeah. exactly what you were going through. Yes. You know, and so yeah, that is a great. That is a great place where the magic happens. Thank yeah. you. Oh my yeah, gosh! Wonderful so, place. So good. wonderful place. So all right. The so we're second, back at my number two. My number two is, and and these, you know what? Um, just like I said, other people are going to have their places where the magic is, and it's going to be different from where our places where the magic is because the memory and the point in time where it happens is like a special moment, a special magic, and I'm taking us to Morocco. For when Sophie was hanging out with Princess Jasmine and the genie And that was such a moment Because we we almost never go into Morocco Okay And we decided let's go walk through Morocco And we were walking through Morocco And we came 
and we're almost to the very back of the pavilion yeah. and there's the princess jasmine and the genie and they're just waiting for people to come say hi to them because they're and so far back and sophie had so much one-on-one <laughs> -on -one time with jasmine and it was incredible and, and the genie, genie was over here trying to get my attention but he was trying so hard to get Sophie's, and she's like, whatever, just talk uh, to the hand, talk to the hand. I, I'm I hope here I for wasn't, Princess I hope Jasmine. I wasn't actually like that. No, you weren't. You weren't rude at all. You were just focused on your princess. Yeah. As And you know what? The genie knew that. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> but the genie had to be the genie, and he was trying to. <laughs> so. So that is number two. And you know what? It's one of those things that magic happened that day. It may not happen next time we walk through Morocco. You know? You're right. No. I haven't seen and them in Morocco in a while. Yeah. And that's what makes it magic. Because you don't know yeah. when it's going to happen and where it's going to happen. That's so. right. So anyway, that's number two in Morocco with Princess Jasmine. And you know what Sophie was telling Princess Jasmine, Brenda? I'm going to get a what? Jasmine costume. Princess Jasmine's decked out in her little sharp threads. And Sophie's like whispering to her, I'm going to get a Princess Jasmine costume just like yours. And, and that's she got what, one, didn't she? she I did. did. It was the only souvenir she wanted the whole trip, so Brenda. I that dragged him awesome. all the way back around World Showcase just to go to Mouse Gear and get it. Yep. So and then sweet. she and then she wore it to Crystal Palace and hugged Pooh Bear in her Jasmine costume. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> and awesome. Just awesome. Totally. Totally <laughs> awesome. I love those memories. I do too. Mm -hmm. I do too. All right. <sighs> hey, Sophie, she's got a number two coming up. Well, see, now I'm trying to actually list them in order, and it's a little bit difficult. No, oh, mine are not in, you mean chronological order? No, just order of which places are most magical. Oh, oh, oh I got you. That's okay, honey. You know what? When it they're comes all... to magic, there's, they're all magic. And, it, and there is, it's almost, mine just fell into what I said, where I have a great one to start and a great one to end, but the ones in the middle are still great as well, you know? Yeah. You're right. You're right. You know. Okay. I think I have one, and it's actually also in Epcot. A lot of mine are in Epcot, actually. I really, really like Epcot. Um, yeah. The one that I'm thinking of now is actually going to be in the Land Pavilion. I love uh -huh. the Land Pavilion. It has two of my favorite things in Future World, and that would be living with the land and also the Garden Grill. But I'm talking about living with the land this time because these two are actually very intertwined with each other, if that makes sense. Because yeah. Living with the Land is honestly such a good ride. It's a hidden gem, if you will, and I'm going to keep on singing its praises forever and ever and ever. Yes. But it also, when I go into Living with the Land and I hear the same spiel that I've heard hundreds of times over about how we can do so much to conserve the Earth and how... Disney is already making some of the biggest efforts in order to do that. It just fills me with this sense of hope. Yeah. Like going through on the boat and seeing the greenhouses, seeing the aquaponics and the hydroponics and the aquaculture that they have, and then learning that these foods that they're growing in the greenhouses and the fish and whatnot is being served at the restaurants around the Disney Resort. That is so cool. And it just makes me feel hopeful for the future because they're right. Earth is a limited resource. We have to preserve it as best we can for the foreseeable future. And yeah, we're doing very well at doing that. Or at least Disney's doing very well. 
They do a lot toward that, actually. Mm -hmm. They do. And it's such a good cause to stand for. I really want to go on the behind the seeds tour. I do, too. Yeah. I think that would be a lot of a, a lot of fun, but also really informative and something that you would learn a lot about, you know? Yeah. Yes. And then after that, it just gets me thinking all that food production makes me hungry. And the Garden Grill is arguably my favorite restaurant in Epcot. Mm -hmm. Arguably. Le Cellier was very good, but nothing beats the Garden Grill. And so it just makes me feel good because they have such good food. It feels like something I could almost get at home if I found a recipe and I'm stuck to making it. So again, yeah. it has that touch of homeliness. Yeah. Great choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, you need to do the behind the seeds tour because you've mentioned that several times. And y'all, if y'all are both interested in doing that, you need to go ahead and do it. The yeah. next time y'all are there, maybe. Maybe. That would maybe be a Christmas present. Maybe. Yeah. It'd be a unique Christmas present. Hmm. All right, Brenda. Okay. You're next. Uh, okay, well. This will be no surprise either because I, I tend to stick to one topic, which is, of course, Walt. So my next magic is it, it's not it's not a one time thing that I'm thinking of. It's every single time that I'm in Hollywood Studios. It's w when I go inside one man's dream uh -huh. and walk around there and see all of the it's the same pictures and the same write-ups and everything that is always there. And the movie in the back is the same. I don't care. I, I love being in there and I love seeing the movie about Walt and just being in there. I don't know what yeah. else to say. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And it's I get it. It's a special place. You know, it is a special place. And you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. You know, number three is probably going to be the partner statue. <laughs> no, it's not. But if I had a number six, it would have been that. <laughs> well, I hear an honorable mention coming on. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, number three, I have show and tell to go with number three. All right. Mm -hmm. And it was August 17th, 2009. Sophie, where are we? August 17th, 2009. We're at Coronado Springs. Yes, we were. But that's not where this happened. Well, it's <laughs> on that trip. I don't know where else you were referring to. August 17th, Brenda, 2009 is when we had... Breakfast at Ohana with oh. Lilo and Stitch. Yeah. And it was great food as always. You know, breakfast or dinner or lunch or whatever. It's great food. Yeah. I even had eggs. Oh my gosh. That's the one time you actually ate eggs? Uh -huh. Well, not the only the one time, but it's one of the times. It's Very rare. rare. Yeah, it's rare. rare. Um. Lilo was there, Stitch was there, Mickey was there, Pluto was there. And, yeah. you know, there is something about a character interaction that just gets magical. And I want you to look at Sophie's face. You know, Aww. she was <laughs> she was eating and and I don't have the shot before, but. Stitch came up behind her and put his arms on her, and she's like, "Oh!" And she was, she was <laughs> oh, both sweet. scared and excited all at the same time. It was so sweet. Cool. It was so cool. That is so cute. That is a cute picture. So Thank gotta you. watch this on YouTube so you can see all these awesome photos. Yeah, but anyway, that was a very cool breakfast and a really cool. Moment of magic because Lilo and Stitch is one of Sophie's all-time favorite movies. 
Yay. Yes, it is. That's a great movie. I have the Aaliyah bag. Aaliyah used to watch it over and over again. I literally have the Lilo and Stitch bag, and I've been wearing it every day for at least a few months now. Yep. Yep. So, that's number three. Sweet. That's a very good number three, Daddy. Thank you, honey. Yep. All right, that means it's my turn again. Yes. Yep. All right, then. Well, again, with the having to choose, it's really difficult, actually. Because I have one that I want to save for last, but it's in the forefront of my mind. Well, if you need to say it now, it's okay. Okay. Yep. Might as well say it now so that I stop thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. There's this place over in Germany, and it has a very specific um, memory attached to it. Hmm. And it's not for the reason that you might think. Um, over in the Germany pavilion of Epcot, there is this miniature train layout. And fun fact, my dad and my grandfather are both really into miniature trains. And oh, so yeah. my dad really likes that area. And we stop by there a lot. But the reason why I like it is because it's raised up above the walkway a little bit. There's a path that goes through it and it's kind of like a bridge and the train will go through tiny tunnels underneath said bridge and whatnot. But the point is that, that it's elevated. And when you're standing on that bridge and you're looking out at World Showcase, you have the perfect view of Harmonious. At least you did while it was still around. And because everyone else is going to be crowding to the fences that separate you from the Seven Seas Lagoon in World Showcase, everyone's mm -hmm. going to be doing that. It's hard to see and whatnot, but nobody, and I mean nobody, was on that bridge. So nice. I was like, that bridge is a little higher up. I went on the bridge and I had the perfect view all night and harmonious is absolutely one of my favorite shows i'm so upset that they got rid of it so soon but the reason i love it the most is because it includes music from one of my favorite movies and that's the hunchback of notre dame and the ending song in the show is this song called someday and that was a deleted song from the hunchback of notre dame Mm -hmm. But it is a beautiful song nonetheless. Yeah. And basically, the lyrics go, Someday, when we are wiser, when the world's older, when we have learned, I pray someday we may yet live to live and to let live someday life will be fairer need will be rarer and greed will not pay god speed this bright millennium on its way, let it come someday. And it is the most tear jerking song I have ever heard. So to hear it playing in a beautiful water show at night really just makes me want to cry. Beautiful, Sophie. Absolutely beautiful. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was trying to save it for last. Got it. I'm not following that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, girl, you ain't got any choice. You're following it whether you want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> I have to follow that magnificent ballad. 
I'm sorry. I was trying to go out with a bang. You yeah. can't. You stayed in with a bang. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear! I made Daddy start to cry. I you know. You always do. Mm. Oh. And that's okay. Yeah. Those are Holy we, we Spirit just cry tears. Around here. That's just Holy Spirit <laughs> tears. But yes, it's on YouTube. Go listen to the song. It is absolutely beautiful. That's yeah. so sweet. I love it. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll move on to something that's never going to come close to that. But mine has a song in it. Yes, let's hear it. Sing There's it. a great big beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> because An arguably better podcast, song. I'm with Walt, no. too. That is an amazing song. There's a lot of magic in there. It's just, the, I think it's, I mean, literally, it's not one time, but I can remember sitting in there with my kids when they were little, sitting in there with my kids when they were teenagers, sitting in there with my kids but when they were adults but not married, sitting there with my kids that were married, sitting in there with all of them with their kids and my grandkids, that ride is a must do for every trip so i have a lot of memories of you know being in there with my family i love that i love the carousel of progress yeah yep so it's just one of those things that reminds me how things have changed so much so fast so i tell families don't don't forego it It, don't it's don't put Don't it off. Don't rush through it's it. It's going to yeah. run. It's going to go. Yeah. So enjoy every moment. Yep. So I love it. I love the Carousel of Progress. And it's a great ride. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm up to number four already. I know. See how fast time goes? Uh huh. And this is a good one. This one, you know what? The backstory on this is that it, of course, it. Who are we? We're foodies. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. This uh, this one revolves around food. You know, the one before revolved around food too. You know, I just thought about that. Hey, mine revolved <laughs> around food. But anyway, this one I thought was the absolute worst reservation oh. time you could ever have because we're going back to 2012 and it was june 13th two days after steph and shane got engaged oh. okay and we were there with so it was cindy sophie and i Mm-hmm. And um, our friend um, Monica and her daughter Madeline Lois, and um, our friends Carrie and Neil. Carrie is one of Sophie's godmothers, mm-hmm. and Aww. they had two children. And then also were Steph and Shane and Shane's brother. So we had a full crew, and we were um, the bulk of us were staying Animal Kingdom Lodge in a two bedroom. DVC points and um but anyway um the thing about it is river and isaiah especially isaiah mm-hmm. isaiah was three if he was three he might have been under three he might but i think he was three um we wanted to eat at cinderella's royal table they wanted to i mean they're like we got us. We got to eat there, and I'm. And so I got the reservation. The only reservation time I could get was eight forty-five p.m. I said I am so sorry. The only one I could get was eight forty-five p.m. And I said, if you want to cancel, we'll cancel and do something else. And they're like, you know, it's late, but let's let's just stick with it and keep it. And so we kept it, and we're fully expecting that. Oh my gosh, the kids are going to be so cranky because they're not eating dinner until 8.45 p.m., especially the two young ones. Um, but we get there, and we're eating dinner, and we're still eating because we're a big party, you know? And 
the announcement comes on while we're inside the castle that the fireworks are going to start. And we were there when the fireworks went off and we were able to see the fireworks through the windows and the, the show was played in the restaurant inside the castle. And we just happened to be there. And that was Disney magic 101 sure. because I was like, this is the absolute worst dining reservation I'm ever going to have. <laughs> and it turned into the best, you know? Yeah. And it was so cool. And what was really neat was Carrie had asked me while we were eating before this all happened, she's like, hey, um, when we get done and we get outside, do you have any um, recommendations on where we can go? Because her kids didn't like the fireworks noises. The sound oh. scared them. Well, and yeah, I didn't like so, them much either. So she was like, I want to go somewhere where we can be inside and not hear the booms and whatnot. And we were right there and we didn't hear the booms perfect. hardly at all. And it was perfect. So that is Disney magic to a T. That's perfect. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So that's number four. I enjoyed nice. that trip so much. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes. A lot of memories made there. Uh-huh. Right. For number for my number four, I'm actually going to take us over to the other side of the country for one of my many trips to California, <laughs> to Disneyland specifically. Um, I'm blessed to be friends with Jagan and Aunt Sheila and Uncle Randy, and they're actually California locals. They live in Los Angeles. And so when I was in high school, from freshman year all the way through senior year, so four years in a row, they would always be like, Mike, come send Sophie to stay with us for a few weeks in California. We have a spare room she can stay in. And it was always the highlight of my summer vacations and my sophomore year well not sophomore year the summer between sophomore and junior year was the year I turned 16 and I was there alone I was there for I think like three weeks and when it on the day of my 16th birthday uh, we were all like, Sophie, you turned 16 today. And I'm like, not quite yet. I was born at 1047 p.m. over in North Carolina. So that made it 747 p.m. in California. <laughs> and I was like, we don't get to say I'm 16 until after 747 p.m. <laughs> yeah. So we had a dinner reservation. Um, it was at the Skipper's Cantina or something like that over in Adventureland in Disneyland. And then after that, lo and behold, 747 rolled around. They gave me a cupcake for my birthday and stuff. And it Aww. was very yummy. And then the first thing I did, officially being 16, was we hopped over to California Adventure and we saw World of Color. That was the first thing I did as a 16 year old and world of color is right up there on par with harmonious in fact i think world of color is better than harmonious and the best part of all is it's still there and the best way i can describe world of color is fantasia it feels like fantasia mm -hmm. and anyone who knows knows that Fantasia is one of my favorite Disney movies. Yeah. So that is a huge magic moment for me. And that was back when it was still Paradise Pier. It wasn't Pixar Pier at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great memory. That's so mm -hmm. sweet. So sweet. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's a really good. Yeah. Really good. That's great. Thank you. All Thank right. you to them for the sweet 16, huh? Yes. Thank you, Aunt Sheila. And I'm actually going to be back with them only this time in Florida next week. Yay. It's going to be amazing. 
Yeah, it is. Well, I'm finally getting away from Walt on my number four. Don't get away from Walt. You don't have to. I'm not getting away from Walt, but this is not particularly something that has to do with Walt. And it's actually just something that I do alone. (laughs) Um, When I'm at, usually when I'm at the resorts, I'll get up early and have my quiet time, which is a need for me. I have to have quiet time in the morning. Like, it's like, I love that fresh cup of coffee, especially when no one's talking to me, that meme, that's me to a T. (laughs) So I find it to be a magical feeling for me when I'm at the yacht club resort and I go out with my coffee on the balcony and look at the water at the yacht club and it it's a beautiful view to me it's it's a soothing it's like that kind of same feeling you get when you go through the gate sophie where you're you're like you're sitting out there and it's like you're calmer than any other time you know Mm -hmm. yeah and that's magic for me that's like it's just like so it's like you can't not give thanks for that that's like it's you know yeah, it's you kind know. of like heaven. <laughs> the, exactly, exactly. That is a great one. So, Thank you. Yep. number oh, we're five. That's number five. We've been waiting all day for it. Number five. Are is... you going to sing? No, I am not going <laughs> to sing. Otherwise, that magic would take the whole show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That would not be magic. <laughs> Number five happened on Sophie's birthday. Oh, I feel like a lot of these happened somewhere around my birthday. Well, sure. But in this case, I do not experience this magic. The magic was so powerful that to this day, it still flows into my heart. Aww. Sophie and I, and Sophie was wearing this outfit. Oh, you're pulling up a picture. Oh, 21st birthday. She was wearing birthday. that yeah. outfit on her 21st birthday with the crown, with the yeah. birthday princess sash, birthday queen. Is that what it says? Yes. And we were hot, you know, we were Disney walking. And we were Disney walking, I think, over to Grand Fiesta Tour, maybe Mm -hmm. somewhere that way anyway. And so we didn't even hear it. I didn't even hear it. But Cindy heard it because she was walking more slowly with my mom. And a little girl saw her, saw Sophie in her outfit that she saw and said to her mom, look, mom, it's a real princess. Oh, that's my girl. That's my princess Aww. right there. That's yeah. right. So sweet. To this day, I still get choked up. That magic still flows. So that's for that, sure. That's why that was mic drop. End of story. Ultimate that's magic. So sweet. I love so. that. Yeah, so, and I didn't even you know. hear her. That was mommy that heard her. And she's like, Sophie, did you hear that little girl back there? And I'm like, no, what did she say? I didn't hear it either. And mommy said, she said to her, she saw you walk by and she said, mommy, look, it's a real princess. <laughs> and it just made me, it made me grin from ear to ear and my face went a little bit red. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yep. So. Very that- sweet. That is, those are my bookends. Number one, Steph and Shane. Number five, my princess. Aww. Very sweet. Very sweet. So. So there you go. Nice. Now Sophie gets to follow that one up because I already paid my dues after she sang. (laughs) 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 Okay. All right. This one isn't really about Disney but it took place in Disney so it counts Um, it was around 
the time of Halloween or Thanksgiving. Actually, it was closer to Thanksgiving than to Halloween. Um, and it was the year of 2019. So that was the year I had gone down to Florida to go to school. That was the year On the Road with Mickey got started, actually. Mm -hmm. And it was at this point in time, this was the first break that I had from school that corresponded with a holiday. And so Aunt Sheila, Uncle Randy, Jagan, as well as my parents, they all organized that they would come down to Florida to go to Disney with me. And Aunt, it was Aunt Sheila, Uncle Randy, and Jagan who had come to pick me up from my apartment that I was living in at the time. So they were the ones who came to pick me up. My parents were still on the road at that time. And so we ate dinner together. We went to their room. They were staying at the Caribbean Beach Resort. And we spent the night there. And then the next morning, my parents got to the resort. They were staying at Pop Century. And I would be joining them for the remainder of their time there. But they met us at Caribbean Beach Resort so that we could all have breakfast together or something like that. And I just remembered going to them where they were getting out of the car, still getting their stuff. And I gave my mom a huge hug. And she was like, hi, Sophie. And I'm like, hi, mommy. And she's like, <laughs> how have you been? And I said, don't take this to heart, but I might have missed you. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy's so calm. She's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm dying over here. Can you see me? I'm shaking and crying. And Oh, it's OK. She's so calm. <laughs> well, it's not like I hadn't been having at least weekly conversations with them both over FaceTime or Skype because I was doing the weekly recording sessions with my dad before you got onto the show. This yeah. was how we stayed in contact with each other while I was still so far away. Yeah. But still, I was like, I missed you. That's so sweet. And a hug. A hug is different. You need a hug. Doesn't matter how many times you see somebody on a screen. <laughs> yeah. And I think that also made my mom feel really happy. She was like, oh, thank goodness. My child still wants to see me. <laughs> Which, why wouldn't I? She was a wonderful mother. But point she is. Still is. Yeah, she still is. Yes. That's great. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But now I'm home, so she gets to see me and put up with my antics every day. Yeah, I'm sure she is very grateful for that. Yes. All right, Brenda. Uh, it's down to my number five. You're closing us out, girl. Oh, okay, well, I have very special memories of many visits to Disney with my family, with my kids and my grandkids. Butch and I just going, the two of us is fun. Everything. But I love all of my granddaughters, so I want to preface this with that. I love all of my granddaughters very, very much. But when you become a grandparent, it's, it's, a, it's not something you expect when your first grandchild is born. Because it's like, it's like you've watched your children grow up. And they've gone through the teenage years and you wanted to kill them. And then they become adults and you love them just as much as you always have, but they're not your baby anymore, you know? And then you have your, you hold your first grandchild and it's like you're holding their, in this case, I'm holding Johnny again, who was Aaliyah's daddy. And it's like, it's a love that's, it's just indescribable. It's so hard to describe. So I, it's impossible. But what I'll say is, Aaliyah is my first granddaughter. I love them all very, very much. But she is the only one that actually started walking at Walt Disney World. And we were in front of the Chinese theater in Hollywood Studios. And she had been trying to walk over by, by Space Mountain the day before, but, you know, falling a lot. <laughs> But 
the first time she actually walked, like walked from where she was to one of us was in front of the Chinese theater. And I can nice. still see it in my head as clear as day, even though she's 12. Yeah, it's oh it was the most magical. It was just. You know, the first grandchild to walk and it was there at Disney. It was indescribable. So that is my. Gosh. My special magic. Number five. Mumbo magic. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is a pretty. Awesome magic. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. The other ones didn't start walking there, but Aaliyah, Aaliyah started walking there, and it was—it's definitely etched into my brain. I hope it stays there forever. Well, oh wow! You know what? Inside Out has it so right. Core memories. That's a core memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that is really a happened. core memory, and that movie is coming out this week, people. Inside That's Out right. 2. June yeah. 14th. Yeah. That's Aunt right. Brenda, when we get done with the recording, I think I have a very interesting YouTube video to send you. And it's actually a Bluey oh. episode. <laughs> but it's Aww. the one where the main character is a baby and she takes her first steps. And I think you would absolutely love it. I have a feeling I will. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, I'm a huge Bluey fan. It's as much for adults as it is for kids. Mm-hmm. Good, because I haven't seen it yet. It's a great show. Yeah. You should see it. All right. Well, people, that was an awesome topic. I know. Yeah. Gosh, so I love it. That it's was love. so cool. That was so cool. I had a great time. I thought this would be a really good topic. And it I had is a, a really great good topic. Time, and I'm glad I got to hear my co host's excellent. Excellent magic moments. So, and your excellent magic moments, and I'm really curious to know what the listeners' magic moments are. I am too. So, I want you all to put your thinking caps on. Give us a couple. We will share them next week in our next episode of taping. So, I will post that in the Facebook group. So, have at it, and let's just let's just get that Disney magic flowing all throughout Facebook. That's right. Yeah. Social media needs more positivity. Throw yes. it out there. We want to know. Yeah. But now it's time for this day in Disney history. Sophie, what do you got, honey? All right. Well, I'm taking us back to the ancient year of 2007. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the Broadway... It's so long ago. <laughs> oh. Sorry. No, I oh, go ahead. I said it's so long ago that Sophie was almost six. <laughs> oh yeah, and we all know what an ancient and decrepit old hag I am. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, look at my dad, he's practically turned into stone. <laughs> but anyway, the Broadway cast of Mary Poppins performs Step in Time live at the 61st annual Tony Awards held at New York City's Radio City Music Hall. Mary Poppins' Bob Crowley takes home a Tony for Best Scenic Design of a Musical. Mary Poppins is also nominated for Best Musical, Best Performance by a Leading Actor in a Musical, Gavin Lee as Burt. Best Performance by a Featured Actress in a Musical, Rebecca Luker as Winifred Banks. Best Costume Design, Bob Crowley. Best Choreography, Matthew Bourne and Stephen Mayer. And Best Lighting Design for a Musical by Howard Harrison. Produced by Cameron McIntosh and Walt Disney Theatrical, the musical will continue to run through March of 2013. Nice. Did yeah, you see? Six years. Did you see how I turned to stone there while Sophie was reading? No, I did not. <laughs> oh, I because I was too busy reading. I was watching Sophie because she was reading. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, never mind then. Maybe I didn't turn to stone, but I'm back now. <laughs> well, that's good. Let's see if I can stump the Soph. Da da da. Let's see. Sophie? Yes? 
This character is 12 feet tall. 12? Yes. Hmm. Is that a giraffe? Can't be a giraffe. I don't know any named giraffes in Disney. Keep going. This character is female. Okay. But has a male name. Okay. Tall, female with a male name. 12 feet tall. Mm hmm. <sighs> okay. This character follows another character or set of characters on their adventures. It's the 12 feet tall that's stumping me. Friends is it a yes. bear? Is it no, a bear? It is not a bear. Okay. Try Wait, is, is it a wardrobe? No. No. 12 feet tall is killing me. It's a female with a male name. Oh my gosh, I thought that would have given it away. Not at all. Mm-mm. You can also find this character at Animal Kingdom. Oh, jeez. I feel like it's a giraffe of some kind. It's not. An elephant, then. No. What on earth could be 12 feet tall? Oh, you're going to... You're going to just be like, ah! I'm stumped. Wow. The answer is Kevin. What? It's from it's up. It's the snipe bird. <laughs> He's 12 feet tall? She. 12 feet. She. He named Russell named him Kevin and then found out later, oh, Kevin's a girl. <laughs> Twelve feet tall? Yeah, Twelve he's foot a tall, huge lightless jungle bird. Yeah. From up in South wow. America. You can find him in Animal Kingdom? Uh-huh. He walks around Animal Kingdom. I mean she she walks around Animal <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> wow. Well, in Russell's wow, defense, right. birds are usually very, very colorful if they're male, so yeah. But anyway, I I'm sorry. Wow. I didn't realize that was gonna be that hard. But you see, that that explains everything about the book. We're getting into the weeds. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a lot harder. And you know, and some of the ones that um that we don't I haven't done are ones that wouldn't be anything you would have probably even cared about seeing, like um, if we look at now, I think if you had mentioned anything about chocolate, I would have gotten it immediately. You know, I didn't see anything about chocolate in there, but that's a really good point. Yeah, because Kevin loves chocolate. Maybe I need to change the game up and give you some names and have you see if you can guess the movie. Mm. That's an idea. Maybe you want to try. We... You want to try one right now on the fly, just to see what you think. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. The first clue is spot. Spot, spot, spot. Okay. And then let's see here. <laughs> Butch. Ramsey <laughs> and Nash. <laughs> These are all from the same movie. 
It's not Lady and the Tramp. No. That's a good guess, though. But Sounds how about like Oliver and Company? No. How about Arlo? Oh, this is the good dinosaur. That, Arlo was the giveaway, huh? Nice. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should do. Maybe. What do you think? You want to yeah, make I it? Think it yeah. Fun. Okay. How many characters do you think we have left in that book? I don't know. Why don't I bring the book home? And we look it through, and you can, I mean. Mommy can look it through to keep the game fair. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because I am not allowed to look at that book, people. Even though I'm the one that bought it for him, I'm not allowed. Because if I look through it, then I'm going to know which characters he hasn't done. And then it's going to be infinitely easier for me. And... Um, you you don't need to look through it very much because you have the photogenic memory, oh photographic my gosh, memory. Oh gosh, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh it's so, amazing. Stumped the sof. Wow, Kevin, movie I'm edition. Shocked. I'm shocked. I was too. I thought, I thought the female with the male name was a giveaway. Well, of see- course. It's always easy because I'm the one looking at the answer. <laughs> you see, Daddy, yeah. um, once you got me thinking 12 feet tall, it got my mind thinking to animals, but I never thought about up. I was thinking the Lion King or I was thinking Tarzan. And I believe in Tarzan, there is a gorilla whose full name is Durkenna, but she goes by Dur, and that kind of sounds like a male name to me, so female with a male name. Plus, I think she has a male voice actor. But anyway, and then the other thing I thought would make it a giveaway um, was the keyword adventures Uh... in that last clue. But anyway, it was a good, that was fun. That was fun. I was, I had no clue. I, that one stumped me way before it stumped her. She at least had some great guesses. Yeah. 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 All right. Wow. Well, that takes us, Brenda, to your yeah. segment, A Little yeah. Bit of Walt. All right. It's a little bit. I've got a lot of ideas. I haven't worked them out. And I haven't proved them out. I carry ideas around in my head for a long time. The he was great, so far beyond his time. Great yeah. Walt Disney. The great Walt Disney. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Yep. We all miss him. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we never actually knew him, we miss him. Exactly. You know, I was thinking for a while, what would it be like if Walt hadn't died so young? What if he had lived to a grand old age of, say, 99? And I realized, even if he had, he would have died a year before I was born. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, another thing I realize now, being the age that I just turned, is in only five years from now, he passed. Like mm-hmm. five yeah. years older than I am now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, God, he had, I mean, like looking from where I am, it's like he had so much life left. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Who knows? You know? Wow. Yeah. It, and that's just, just you know what? It just goes to show um, don't put off to tomorrow, you know? Walt yeah. died at age 65, yeah. well before his time, but it was his time. That's when God called him. River yeah. River was gone in an instant. That's our dog. Yeah. And he passed mm-hmm. away recently. And I almost had Doug as my character, but then I saw underlining and realized that we had done him, and I didn't write down the date, but I looked it up and wrote the date down. So, um because I say Doug because Doug was a golden and River is a golden. So, Aww. um, yeah. but you don't know. You don't, you don't know. You don't. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. So, live for today. Live for today yep. and, and make sure you live for eternity. And there, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to go there. I'm going to say you need to make sure you know who you're following so that you have eternal life. You know? Yeah. Yep. And and we're all Christian on this show. And yes. that's that's why my shirt says Friday Morning Fellowship Brothers in Christ. Um, but anyway. That's the truth. Because we know that we'll meet up again one day. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And um, I hope you all have had a fun episode listening following along shouting at some of my insane stuff that i say and do um enjoying sophie's beautiful singing oh my gosh that was a highlight sophie you don't give yourself enough credit girl that <laughs> was a true. highlight and i had tears in my eyes mm. so my moment yes um next week we you know When Cindy and I went on our cruise in January, we did a placeholder for a future cruise. Mm -hmm. And on that future cruise, we're looking at taking Sophie with us. Yes, please. Fun, fun, fun. And we've got to start doing a little research, figure out where should we go cruising with Sophie? You know? Yeah. So, our topic next week is purely for Mike's edification. (laughs) (laughs) Top five Disney cruise itineraries. We're specifically talking Disney because our placeholder is with Disney Cruise Line. Mm -hmm. And um, I want us to come up with five itineraries that we think would be really cool because that will help cindy and i and sophie figure out where we want to go and help us convince brenda to come with us and butch need to come with us fun right brenda yep yeah well and my disney cruise favorite itinerary has been the same for a long time but i've already done it like three times so it's time to do something new baby maybe or time to bring your north carolina family with you and yeah. so we can yeah. experience why it's the best out there. That's right. So anyway, that's our, we've got homework. We got to look up some itineraries and we got to figure out what would be our top five list and then see what we can do about it. But, um, but that's our topic next week. So um, until then, we hope you have a great week. Remember, If someone's having a bad day, give them a smile. Hopefully that will turn their day right around. And if you're having a bad day, hopefully someone will smile at you and turn your day around. So we're smiling at you right now. We are. Um, If you want really good smiles, just look up something of our show and you'll probably find something that will make you go, oh my gosh. Um, at some moment in one of the episodes somewhere. So just start watching them. (laughs) Maybe that'll bring a smile. But anyway, I'm Mike. She's Sophie. That's Brenda. And he's Grogu. And we will see you you on the the road. road. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.